Welcome to this video introduction to turbidimetric inhibition immunoassay. In this video, we will explore what turbidimetric inhibition immunoassay is, how it works, and its application in detecting proteins. We will also discuss some characteristics in the latest development of turbidimetric inhibition immunoassay. Let's get started. We all know that if we go to the hospital or clinic for treatment, we often need to do some tests on specific proteins. Only after knowing the concentration of these proteins in the body and doing some other tests can the doctor make an accurate judgment. For example, CRP is measured to determine whether patients are infected, and D-dimer is measured to determine blood coagulation function. Therefore, almost all clinical laboratories and emergency departments have equipped one or more specific protein analyzers. And the most common technology used by these analyzers is turbidimetric inhibition immunoassay, abbreviated as TINIA. The turbidity of TINIA is like adding different amounts of sand to a glass of clear water. The sand is equivalent to the immune complex, and the water is equivalent to the solution. When we shine a flashlight on the glass, the sand will block or reflect the light, making the glass look darker or brighter. We can judge the amount of sand by the brightness of the glass, which is also the amount of immune complex. In fact, there is no tinea at the beginning, only the immunoprecipitation method. But after Schultz and Schwick successfully proposed transmission turbinometry in 1959, tinea became a rapid and diverse development of various detecting methods, such as scattering turbinometry and rate scattering turbinometry. First of all, the ratio of antigen and antibody is the key factor for turbidity formation, so we need to understand the process of antigen-antibody binding. And to explain the process of antigen-antibody binding, the most classic model is the Heidelberger-Kendall curve. The Heidelberger-Kendall curve shows the relationship between antigen level and precipitation slash detection signal at a certain constant antibody level. It can be divided into three stages. One, excess antibody. There's an excess antibody in the reaction cup and there are many free binding sites. Each added antigen will immediately bind and cause further cross-linking. In this stage, the relationship between antigen level and detection signal is proportional. Two, the equivalence range. The concentration of the antigen and antibody in the reaction cup is basically equal. Here, the cross-linking reaction is strongest and the solubility of antigen-antibody complex is lowest. Three is excess antigen. When there is more antigen than antibody in the reaction cup, because there is not enough antibody to bind all the antigens, the solubility of immune complex increases again. This means that the detection signal is smaller instead of higher, indicating a lower result instead of a higher one which is also called hook effect. Therefore, tinea must be performed when there is an excess antibody in the reaction solution. At this time, the turbidity of the reaction solution is positively correlated with the antigen content. In addition, there must be non-ionic hydrophilic polymers in the reaction solution to promote the formation of immune complexes, such as polyethylene glycol 6000. After the formation of immune complexes, it is a question of how to detect them. According to the detection method, immunoturbidimetric assays can be mainly divided into two types, transmission turbidimetry and scattering turbidimetry. Transmission turbidimetry is when light passes through a solution and can be absorbed by immune complexes. The more immune complexes there are, the more light they absorb. The amount of light absorbed is proportional to the amount of immune complexes within a certain range. The amount of analyte is calculated by using the change in transmitted light intensity. On the other hand, in scattering turbidimetry, a certain wavelength of light is irradiated along the horizontal axis. When it passes through a solution and encounters antigen-antibody complex particles, light is refracted by particles and deviates from its original direction. The angle of light deviation is closely related to the wavelength of emitted light and the size and number of antigen-antibody complex particles. 
the intensity of scattered light is positively correlated with the content of the complex. That is, the more analyte there is, the more complex there will be formed, and the stronger scattered light will be. The amount of analyte is calculated by using the change in scattered light intensity. Tinea has been used to measure different proteins related to various clinical or disease conditions. For example, HbA1c is considered to effectively reflect the average blood sugar level in the past 8 to 12 weeks in medicine and is therefore commonly used as a monitoring indicator for diabetes control. Another example is CRP, which is a protein that rises sharply in plasma when the body is infected or tissue is damaged, and is therefore commonly used to determine whether patients are infected. For example, there is almost no PSA in normal serum, so an increase in PSA suggests the possibility of prostate cancer. Compared with other types of detection, tinea has several advantages. Firstly, because most companies have integrated various protein detection projects into one system or instrument, the overall cost and complexity have been greatly reduced, and large-scale detection of different proteins can be carried out at the same time. Secondly, compared with enzyme-linked immunoassay or ELISA, Tinea does not require washing, simplifies the process, and reduces the risk of pollution. In addition, Tinea has a fast detection speed and can generally detect results within 20 minutes. Of course, just like any other detecting technology, Tinea is not a perfect choice. Due to the small size of immune complex particles and their inability to block light passage, the sensitivity of Tinea is low and it fails to detect cancer in early stage, while NGS or PCR can. In addition, Tinea usually reacts in quartz colometric dishes and requires a large amount of samples or reagents, resulting in high costs. People have made a lot of efforts to improve the tinea. The more mature and improved technologies currently include latex particle enhanced turbidimetry immunoassay, abbreviated as LEDIA. LEDIA is a method of binding antibodies to tiny latex particles. When the antigen-antibody complex transforms into antigen-antibody latex complex, the diameter of the immune complex is greatly increased, and this detection sensitivity can be increased by more than a thousand times. At the same time, the interference by non-specific reactions is greatly reduced, so its accuracy and repeatability are better. Especially, the double antibody bound by double latex particles technology or Durrell Patent Technology, Dual Radius Latex Enhanced Technology, has recently been applied to transmission turbidimetric inhibition immunoassay. The high reactivity antibodies are coated with large latex particles to improve analytical sensitivity. The low reactivity antibodies are coated with small latex particles to extend the measurement range, greatly improving detection sensitivity and detection range. Taking CRP as an example, the first generation reagent is a traditional transmission turbidimetric inhibition immunoassay with a detection range of 3,250 mg per liter. The second generation reagent uses PETIA with a detection range of 1.3250 mg per liter. And the third generation reagent uses double antibody bound by double latex particles technology with a detection range of 0 0.3350 mg per liter, greatly increasing analytical sensitivity and measurement range. After discussing so much, Tinea has become a mature technology and is widely used in the detection of various proteins due to its fast, convenient, and large-scale detection characteristics. They have played an irreplaceable role in helping doctors diagnose diseases. Meanwhile, researchers are always looking for ways to improve the technology itself. Thank you for watching. Best of DX.